but they used to. This was because they were using Dutch technology to farm. That is like GPS, uh, uh, tractors. So they had to get uh, people, people from uh, uh, Dutch, Netherlands. So they had to get people from uh, Netherlands to come and operate their machinery. But uh, thanks to COVID, the travel restrictions forced them now to train uh, Kenyans to do that. And uh, they were able to have that. And now those Kenyans are also training others as they, uh, they continue the operations. So for the next one, I think uh, my colleague will take it. Uh, afternoon. So uh, I'll take the next question. Th thanks, Robert. Uh, what and where are the opportunities for enterprise? So one of the opportunities that uh, was highlighted was the lack of farm managers. So uh, the manager, Greco, mentioned sometimes uh, she'll be approached by guys with large farms, say 100 acres, and they require a skilled farm manager to take care of their farm. So that's an opportunity that can... Uh, the other opportunity was in extension services. Uh, she mentioned about the spraying service providers. Uh, this is an area that you know, youths can also leverage, uh, especially because uh, sometimes when you are spraying the pesticide, it may require some technical aspect of you know, how do you spray and ensure that the crop uh, gets the spray. Uh, the other opportunity was on the potato farming or the production stage of the potato value chain. Uh, she gave us some breakdown that they have done out of, uh, you know, visiting different regions. And wha what came out, uh, using their seeds uh, for half an acre, a smallholder farmer would have to invest about 60000 for the entire uh, period. And this would have a potential return of 120000 uh, expected uh, output would be about six to seven tons and uh, normally sell between 20 to 25 shillings per kilo. So that's another area. Uh, the last uh, potential area is the need to commercialize potato production. Uh, so you realize most of the smallholder farmers are uh, still carry out the farming in a Kenyaji way. So youths can uh, get trained and uh, you know, give the training to the farmers at a fee. Uh, the last question was on how can the hub address some of the uh, skill gaps? And what we agreed was uh, when the hub is doing the curriculum development, it would be uh, good to incorporate or to collaborate with some of these stakeholders, like Agrico, and they say they are ready to, you know, give feedback on uh, some of the, these key areas. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Group Three. Um, we have uh, uh, Professor Kahi who wants to say a few words to you guys today also, so we're very glad to have him here with us again. Um, please, Professor, the floor is yours, and then we will continue with the group two. Thank you so much. Okay. T -t -t today is not my, my day. But uh, you must have noted that. I don't know where, where is my bag. <laughs> 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 it's very 
hard to carry a bag all the time. It's too heavy. So uh, as I had mentioned yesterday, you remember in my, my presentation, I, I, I mentioned that uh, today we'll be hosting the, the Deputy Vice-Chancellor in charge of uh, research and extension. And, uh, and I also remember mentioning that uh, if, if we get time, maybe we can maybe host a dean of, uh, of a faculty and I'm happy that uh, today being a Friday, it's always very difficult to, to get these uh, professors on Friday because today is always a day for meetings. And as we speak, there is a council meeting going on. And I'm happy that uh, the professors, they've gotten time to come and, and talk to us. So in the house uh, today, we have two uh, uh, senior professors in this in this university one of them is uh, the dean faculty of uh, of agriculture professor patience uh, mshenga i will just invite her briefly to come and greet you and then we also have the the deputy vice chancellor in charge of research and extension uh, professor Brooklyn bebe and at this particular point i'd like to request uh, the dean faculty of uh, agriculture to say something and then thereafter she invites the deputy vice chancellor for your information as professors within the faculty of agriculture she's our boss so if she tells us uh, myself together with the professor Bebe, if she says you are fired we are fired <laughs> yeah so she, she is the boss professor patience and then you like we invite the dvc good afternoon yeah, when I tell them to jump, they have to ask how high do we jump, yeah? So, it is a pleasure being with you this afternoon, and uh, my joy is to welcome you to Edgerton University, and especially to the Faculty of Agriculture. And I'm told that the participants here are from institutions that are participating in the JOY project. My heart is always with the youth. And uh, basically, for all my research, from the time I began this work in academics, they have mostly been in entrepreneurship and youth employment. So Prof. Kahi has been my mentor, same to Prof. Bebe, and as I stand here, in as much as they have said that I tell them to jump and they have to ask how I, they have been my mentors in this journey, and I can say that this far I've gotten because of the support from them. Having said that, youth unemployment a very big problem, especially in the African continent. And many a times we have been asking ourselves, how can we be able to put up strategies to be able to counteract this? Especially for us who are in learning institutions and even our partners who are working with us. And one of the areas that we have found has potential to have our youth participating in, in terms of maybe getting jobs, is in agriculture. And as a faculty of agriculture in Edgerton University, which is the mother university when it comes to agriculture, we are proud of that. And actually we do not apologize when we say that agriculture is or Egerton University is the best agricultural institution in Africa, south of the Sahara. We do not apologize, and we have no apologies for that. It's a fact. So we have to be at the forefront of this agenda of how we can be able to see how we can be able to get our youth to participate in agricultural value chains so that they can be able to create jobs for themselves and not only for themselves but also for other people. 
So for you to be able to participate in this, this is uh, very good and we believe that your participation will not be in vain but you are going to move forward and even contribute towards this agenda and towards this conversation. Now, when it comes to creating jobs in agriculture, then there are some things that we may need to look into and I think, Prof, as you move on with this project, maybe these are some of the things that we'll be looking at. I can see that we are having a training here today. That is one of the issues. We want the youth to participate in agriculture. Do they have the necessary skills or the requisite skills? That is very important, that these youth have the skills to be able to create these jobs in the different value chains. The other issue is about innovation. We have heard that most of the young people are shying off from the agricultural sector. Why? Because they believe that agriculture is for the old people. Maybe it's because of the technologies that are being used. So it's a high time that we started looking at the technologies that are in place and what we can be able to come up with such that we have technologies that are interesting to the youth. For example, when you talk about ICT in agriculture, most of the youth will be interested in that. Another thing is about incubation. That is why we are here today. Incubation, where we can be able to have the youth come together, exchange ideas. They are facilitated in different ways. For example, when it comes to maybe financial support, etc. So it is important for us to have this and also linkages with other members or other institutions in the ecosystem. I can see we have Mespit here. Margaret, how are you? <laughs> yeah, so those are some of the other institutions that we can be able to collaborate with. Uh, so collaborations are very, very important. And I believe that if we move this way, then I think in one way or another, even if it's just in a small way, we can be able to address some of the challenges that we are having when it comes to youth unemployment. I will not go further than this. I'm a lecturer, and as a lecturer, I can talk for several hours. But for today, I will stop there, and mine is just to invite the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Research and Extension, Prof. Brooklyn Bebe. Karibu. Uh, <coughs> may I say good, uh, is it evening already or afternoon? Uh, first let me welcome you to Egerton. I know you have been here earlier. But now let me say on behalf of the Egerton University uh, Administration that uh, we welcome you and we are happy that you chose to be in Egerton. This is the place to be for capacity building in ag agribusiness. Uh, looking at you, something makes me have joy, and the joy that is the name of your project. The youth, the majority of youth, eh? I was expecting 50-50. I'm seeing tilted towards the other group. Eh? <laughs> Maybe the others will come uh, later. But if you have 50-50 of the youth, that is gender, uh, then that would be very well. Ijaton, as uh, she has said, we cherish being known for agricultural innovations. And our motto is transforming lives through quality education. That has been our running motto. But we get criticized out that our programs are theoretical. We've been having that criticism. So we've been doing self-searching. How do we remove that tag away? That's what Professor Kai, I'm pleased, has taken the challenge to engage with the private sector, 
that are here, and then the practitioners, the MESP, they're there, and all of you that are not from the academics, eh? you look at an issue from a different perspective. When we combine, we look at it from the academic perspective. That way we come up with what I want to say is innovation. Because then it changes our thinking going forward. That changed thinking should be of value to the people that we work with, to the people that we want to support, to the people we want to transform their lives. The people that Kenya, Kenya government, has priority to transform their lives are who? The youth. So this project meets that threshold, that we are focused on the youth. And we are focusing on the youth, not youth necessary to be employed, but youth to create employment. Because you are youth in the business, eh? So you have to create employment, not necessarily just to be employed. And that way you are expanding the opportunities. Expanding the opportunities in agriculture, I think, uh, lifts, give the opportunity to lift more out of the poverty that we are in. Kenya, we are basically still agricultural. If agriculture does well, like they just gave the results uh, last night, our uh, status Kuburia, I think they said agriculture had some positive uh, gains. That positive gains will not be there without competent, skilled labor force, which is, uh, which is you. So you are fitting at the Asiaton strategic goal, you are fitting at the national strategic goal. Competent labor force that works in agriculture to commercialize. We have been accused that our agriculture is not making move, is not changing, because we are too much subsistence oriented. Not even hobby. What is the difference between being subsistence <laughs> and hobby? Yeah? I believe when you're doing it at the hobby level, it's different from when you are just at uh, subsistence. Eh? At hobby, you have already met, met your basics. Eh? At subsistence, you are struggling. How about when you are at commercial? Are you struggling? Are you having your goals realized or met? I think when you are at the commercial level, your key, or rather your goal, is to turn profit. Turn around. Eh? Means there has to be growth. Eh? Because the profit of this year, you want to compare it, if you're doing your, uh, your end year statement budget, you compare with the previous. Eh? Has there been a move? Have they, have, have they changed? If the profit is always only 10% in the next or so years, and you're the manager, you may be heading to be fired. Eh? So you, you must show progress that you're making. So the value system that we, sh we are also creating here through these interactions, I think is also important. That the, through the interactions that the academia, the private, the NGOs, the civil society that you have here, that you have assembled, when you live, when you live here, you have a rich, rich innovation. And that I want to thank the, the people who designed this program, uh, together with our team, that that be implemented. I also have a role in that success. Eh? Where I sit, I have to be sure Professor Kai <laughs> meets and implements the activities as agreed, as contractual terms signed. I'm the custodian of that one. Eh? So far, I want to give you guarantee and assure you, we are on track. And we, can, we shall continue being on track. Because we cherish that, and we want to retain that partnership. We, don't, we never want to lose our partners. Eh? So challenges of that kind of contractual terms being honored, 
we do all possible not to have them linger. They are dressed and addressed promptly so that the project uh, contractual terms, deliverables, you'll meet them as you desire. But only if you, yeah, you also do your part. Eh? Your part is different from my part. Eh? You are the field people, you are the practical people, you are the people to move things. Eh? And me, I'm just waiting, was it moved? <laughs> if it was not moved, I want to know why. Yeah? That's when I come in. But when it is moved and I'm seeing uh, things are okay, I'm very happy. So all of us, I'm inviting you to be happy with me. Happy with me that we have the success of this and we have the success of the program and all of us change our lives. Back to our motto, transforming lives through quality education. Maybe soon we should change it to also, or add eh, through quality education and something about partnership, eh? because this is a partnership thing, eh? and, a, and a rich partnership eh? that is yielding results. Eh? I met one of you. I suppose it's you. You were saying you were from Uganda. Yes. Yes. Is there any other else who's not from Kenya? All of all of you are Kenyans. You're the only one from Uganda. I believe. Uh, you got this through, either you are in Kenya, you got it somewhere there, but uh, ex extend, eh? tell them each is the place to get that kind of training, eh? so that when you come next, we come more two, three, four. Eh? We still remain uh, friends with the Uganda, with the Makerere, a lot of programs we are doing together, uh, with them, Gulu and the rest. Eh? In fact, currently, as, as I, before I came here, we have a TAGDEV program uh, they're also having down there uh, together with the Ru Forum. It's about Ijaton and Gulu. And uh, they are trying to also do what we are doing, though theirs is at the based on farm uh, level, but you, you've already gone into the business level. So the sharings we are doing, I want to encourage you to make them really engaging. Make them really engaging, everybody learn, so that him, when he goes to Pwani University, he will be teaching things that are practical. Eh? You can relate to the reality. Eh? You can relate to the reality. And the reality, I had the gentleman who was giving a, a feedback here, uh, talk about uh, the books, eh? the books in terms of uh, think statements. Eh? At the end of the day, there has to be a shilling more in your pocket if we have to have people remaining in agriculture. That's what the youth want. Eh? And through that, I want to say this is a good project. It meets our objective, national, this, uh, the, 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 the SDGs, and may it continue. Us as a university will give you all the support that you need to implement it, uh, to succeed. Our job is to create an enabling environment for you from where I sit. That is guaranteed to you. Do your part, we do our part, and then Ifad, eh? is it Ifad? Should then give you more time later, add you, and give you even more challenges thereafter. Thank you, welcome to Egerton again. Thank you. Thank you very much for this. Um, we will show you, we will continue our session and uh, you can, uh, we are discussing about the field visits that they, that uh, it happened this morning, so they are reporting back, so maybe you can also learn on what we did this morning. Group number two, uh, Plotus, Plotus Technology, oh it's you, Forrester. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. I'm Forrest Odongo, representing Group 2, that we had an opportunity to visit the plotter's technology. The group had a total of six, seven participants who went there, 
and I'm here standing on behalf of those particular individuals. So first, in summary, Plotus uh, Technology is a company that deals with engineering and their motto is engineering to a better world. They are majorly dealing with products of agriculture and food industry. The machineries that are used for uh, agriculture and those that are, that are used in food industry. Background information is that this particular industry, the potas industry, started as an agriculture and food manufacturing industry for the equipments to be used in those particular industries. It is headed by a young CEO by the name Mr. Samuel Mwangi, who is an engineer in the field of mechanical. And it has got seven uh, staff. The pro prospects within the industry, we had the opportunity to walk around and see the machinery that uh, they have. The first one that uh, had the striking is this machinery called Malkia uh, Inca Bruder. This one here doubles as uh, Bruder and at the same time an hatchery. This particular machine or equipment improves the way we do things in terms of poultry industry in that it is able to hatch and at the same time able to take care of the chicks. And this helps in reduction the mortality by 30%. The second machinery was the nanotap. The nanotap is basically water purification machine. And if you look the, around Njoro, they have got a the problem of water. And this machine will help the, the, the locality in water purification in terms of making that water better for consumption. The next uh, equipment that we had a glance at is one called Taweza Multipurpose Vegetable Cutting Machine. This one here is basically assists the locals in cutting, slicing of vegetables and it makes the work easier. And basically, this one can be used majorly by the mama. Hats that they normally have. You normally see that the mambogas normally tie their hands so that when they are cutting vegetables for sale, they are not cut by this particular the, 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 the knives. Also, it is used for making clips. Next equipment is the Rafiki plastic extruder. This one here basically, the, it can be used in two folds, fun, can be used in the uh, recycling of plastics, and secondly, they can uh, use, they can buy the, 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 the plastics and used to make molds from it. They told us that they are not in the process of recycling because of the steps that it involved, but they normally buy uh, the chips, plastic chips, and uh, then ends up making the molds, the plastic molds, the plastic poles, up to three meters. This was a very good machine, and if adopted, can help in uh, cleaning the environment through recycling, and also can help in reduction of cost through manufacturing of plastic parts, the plastic molds, and the plastic boards that can be used. Next was Zesha CNC milling machine. Something very striking on this is that this machine was developed by themselves. They never bought it, it's a milling machine, and uh, it is used for making molds. The metallic parts 
any part that is me uh, metallic can be used, uh, you can make uh, using this particular machine. Something that is uh, of essence is that this milling machine in some of the institutions, uh, the technicals, the universities, some are there and they are lying idle, gathering dust, yet this particular young, these young men are able to make their own. So you can see there is a very big gap in between the informal sector and the formal sector. So that's why this particular group are doing wonderful work in terms of uh, their innovation and coming up with this particular machinery, which of course, most of the population in the country normally ignores the Juakali. And you find that most of uh, our organization, instead of maybe contracting some kind of uh, informal sectors, maybe because they do not know or they don't know, they go out and, and, and import these particular machines. Yet we have got people who can design, manufacture, and have the same, same thing working. Lastly, the equipment that we saw there was a 3D printer. This one is, does the initial work, the design, the testing before the actual mass production. This one here, they said it is cheaper when they buy because it costs around 40,000, so they didn't see the need of designing it. The second activity that they normally conduct is training. They do training for the, for the youth, they do training for the TVET institution that they, the Njero Polytechnic, and in total they have trained a total of 100 students, the youth, within the vicinity in plumbing, welding, fabrication. Milestone. The first milestone is, in December 2021, this particular group was awarded most innovative enterprise in Kenya. Milestone two is that in 2021, December again, they were awarded the best young Africa entrepreneurs by Ruforum. Skill gaps. One of the skill gaps that they talked about is that although they are trying their best in terms of having the skilled manpower, but they still do outsourcing, outsourcing of certain skills. Second gap is that they were talking of the gap of the HR and procurement officers. Linkages, as we were going through the process of uh, listening, understanding, and the, at the time of question and, and answers, we realized that this particular group can be linked to certain organization. The first organization was the Shambhari Technical Training Institute. They can use the lead machine, they can use the CNC milling machine that are there in order to make this particular product that they are making. The second linkage was uh, with the, who can remind me? Mesao Ile Nguine. ATDC. That can provide them the space, can provide them with the, the, the testing, can provide them with the, 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 the source of power at a cheaper rate so that they can be able to make more and more profit and make, ensure that uh, at least they are uh, known a wider range. Otherwise, if any member has got something, come. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Thank you for that. Although that's what I have for uh, the group too. Thank you, Forrester. Thank you, group two. Any questions? So, we are very happy that synergies and linkages already happened during this uh, meeting in the field and um, hopefully uh, in the future we'll be, we will be hearing more. Group one, do you want to share with us? Thank you. Amos. 
Thank you so much. Then we will uh, leave the floor to our guests, our guest uh, um, Sam Bossa, for the for that will take us through the green jobs and the renewable energies opportunities, challenges, and we will be working with him on this topic for the rest of the afternoon. Thank you, Amos. Thank you very much. Uh, our group, we visited a, an enterprise by the name Inuka and Jorofits, and uh, it's a youth group. It, uh, it started as a self-help, uh, a merry-go-round, youth coming together, eventually registered a self-help group, and uh, they decided to do some farming. So from the process of doing the farming and the challenges of marketing, they decided to do some value addition, and thereby coming with uh, feed formulation. So they started something on feed formulation and uh, with some trainings from partners here, they were able to get some machines from study and they started the journey. So from also that process, they noted that farmers need a, a one-stop shop for, from the feed, from the agrochemicals and all those. So they now moved to come up with a, an agrovet. So they operate also an agrovet. It's a group of uh, 10 members who are youth. And they're doing well. So from the story, it's a small, medium enterprise, not compared with the, the others, but it's a lesson to our youth that you can start from somewhere and you can raise from, if you have the passion because they show the passion they have in agriculture, in terms of what they do, and that was a, a touching aspect that we noted. So in terms of uh, the skill gaps, uh, the issues were uh, all about the soft skills. So youth have a really big issue when it comes to uh, the skills in terms of soft skills, the passion, and therefore they need to be trained on the soft skills. Also in terms of uh, employees, they have uh, four employees who are permanently employed. But uh, due to COVID, they had some challenges in terms of uh, income. They, are both, they, they were uh, reduced their production, but they are now picking up. They are now engaging two additional casual laborers and uh, two attaches. So they have opportunities for attachment. They also do a lot of training around this area of Nesut and Joro. They do a lot of training to farmers, and therefore they'll be of good help to the JOY project in terms of uh, mentoring the other youth, in terms of coaching the other youth. Uh, but their main challenge is on expansion because they, they need a lot of capital so that they are able to satisfy the needs of the farmers. To have that one-stop shop, you need a lot of uh, resources, and therefore, if there's any partner who is willing to assist them, they are welcome for that. They want to increase their production by 70% by in the next two years. So that's an opportunity that they, they lack. Also, uh, in terms of competition, there are some big agrovets around. They are giving them a lot of competition, but their issue is uh, theirs is uh, it's also in uh, training farmers. So they expect that when they train farmers, they can also 
be their customers. But the challenge is now, when the, when the farmers come, they don't have the, all the, the necessary feeds and agrochemicals, so they end up with the other agrovets. So in terms of the hub, they say that uh, there are a lot of youth around who want to be trained. They are willing, they have the passion. So, uh, and they are also from the experiences from the field, they are able to connect some other youth to the, to the hub and to be mentored for that. So uh, maybe I've not captured a lot. In case uh, other members have other issues, I think that's the basically the the thing about the Inuka feed camp enterprise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Group One. Any questions to? to finalize this uh, field visits session. Well, uh, I'm very glad to welcome uh, our expert in green jobs, renewable energy um, opportunities, industry. We are glad that to have him here with us and uh, to listen to his uh, inputs, suggestions, and he should uh, you should have a PowerPoint, guys. Do you have it? Okay. So it's, they're ready for you. Karibu. Thank you, Sam. Thank you very much. Uh. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Sam Bossa from Uganda. Um, excuse me. <coughs> yeah, um, I and um, a colleague who is unable to be here by the names Keys Vandari uh, uh, helping. Uh, IFAD uh, to integrate um, green approaches in the agribusiness hub program across the entire um, country, set of countries in which the, the program is being implemented. <coughs> so, um, as uh, I've said, there are several countries we are working in. We have so far completed with the Rwanda. Uh, we are on course to complete for Nigeria. Um, we are beginning entry into Mozambique and we will do for Cameroon and the other countries that will come on board. Um, so um, my purpose of coming here um, was first to raise um, the awareness about uh, the green dimension among the JOY partners, um, JOY program partners. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, the light is a problem for me, yet I don't want to wear these glasses. Yeah, so um, we have some slides that we, are go that we are going to use to follow this discussion. Um, I think they are still fixing the problem. But um, uh, we want to, first of all, understand what um, the green approaches are in the context of agriculture and what they mean for sustainability and uh, of course for the relevance of this project um, employment particularly for young men and women in Kenya but also elsewhere so um, the use of the word green um, should not scare anyone 
the, the, the approaches are not green in color. They can be any color or they don't have any color. But um, they, the term is used to refer to activities that um, rotate around sustainability, uh, resource sustainability, you know, resource efficiency, environmental sustainability, and uh, reduction of uh, green gas, uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Um, as you are aware, agriculture is a major contributor to uh, resource degradation, as you all know. Uh, three quarters of uh, Africa, sub Saharan Africa and arable land is degraded. Um, and uh, agriculture has a lot to do with that. But at the same time, it is at the same time a victim of the degradation. So once the land is degraded, then there will be no productivity. So um, it is important as stakeholders to reflect on the sector we are dealing with. Um, it has a lot of implications, the way we do it, the way we promote these different activities has a lot to do with uh, sustainability. How much is uh, our approach is contributing to sustainability and um, we, what can we do about it? What opportunities can come with measures that uh, aim at addressing some of these uh, uh, problems? So, um, maybe you huh? I'll put it there, maybe. Um, apologies for that. Um, yeah, I, I'll continue without it in the meantime. So, um, as a definition, um, green jobs, we use the IRO uh, conceptualization of green jobs in this, and we look at jobs that are that produce goods and services that reduce environmental sustainability and um, create environmentally, socially, and um, economically sustainable enterprises and economies. Um, we'll soon see examples of this, but um, a lot of the things I'm talking about, you people here have seen them here or there. Uh, it's just a realization of uh, how important they are if we adopted them. So um, we, we are looking at the JOY program, identifying some of these initiatives and bring them on board. Um, we have been somewhere in, a, oh, I, I didn't get the name of the place, but past Nakuru, at Agraco, um, um, Potato, enterprise and um, we learned a lot but we also discovered that there are some opportunities around
um, while at the same time the disappearance of vegetation is causing desertification. You, you see the, the, the two sides of, of agriculture. So um, we, we need to understand these things. Um, the, the food losses, the extent of food losses um, cannot, the way it is, uh, It uh, brought forward is that um, there is a considerable interest in promoting um, greener processes and green agricultural products. That's a, a general view when you look at the different sectors and talk to different people. Um, however, there is a big challenge that uh, the markets for green products and services agricultural green products and services are not yet developed and sometimes they are too narrow and uh, maybe that presents an opportunity uh, for those that might be um, willing or interested uh, venturing to the sector. 
Um, the other thing is... Uh, They are involved in uh, recycling uh, um, rice husks and uh, turning them into organic uh, fertilizers, which they package and sell. Um, you know, so some of these illustrate um, an interest of the private sector. Uh, in Rwanda, we had a, a company called Strotec. It is involved in recycling rice straws, not husks this time, but straws to make um, construction material, uh, boards. You're going to see some pictures soon. So this sort, of, uh, um, this sort of findings illustrate the private sector interest in green initiatives. So that gives us optimism. Um, so the question is, what can we do to promote these sort of enterprises? Um, and of course, the enterprises are creating direct and indirect jobs. Um, Think about solar, uh, solar energy, solar-powered uh, farm implements. They are capable of doing so, so much. From where we, we, we came from this morning, um, Agro, Agroco, Agroco, I think. I keep forgetting the name. Um, the manager there told us they are using solar to, for, for irrigation, for pumping the water for irrigation. And uh, already that is a green activity. Um, so you can extrapolate this to different um, aspects of farming, uh, whether it is uh, cooling or heating or processing, you know, drying. So there can be a lot of opportunities um, that can be created around renewable energy. Biogas. Um, I was speaking to one of the staff here yesterday about uh, uh, biogas, and uh, he was very keen. Unfortunately, he's not here. But um, you don't need so many cows or cattle, for that matter, for you to be able to put up um, a bio rather a biogas system, um, and. Uh, when you look at the area where we are, for example, it's a livestock uh, farming area with a lot of potential for biogas. The question is what economic or rather job opportunities does that bring? Because if somebody sets up their biogas at home, that's it. But we are going to see uh, how you can generate um, jobs for youth, but also anybody from that approach. Um, we talk about uh, recycling of uh, different
Morning again, uh, I'll keep referring to that. Uh, we inquired whether there is any form of recycling of uh, their waste because they are uh, sort of a mini industry involved in uh, different activities and releasing a lot of uh, waste. Waste can be solid, but it can also be uh, liquid, water, you know, urea, for example, that is waste and it has uses. So recycling simply means putting to use something that is otherwise uh, discarded from a process. And um, it can take so many forms. As long as it can find another use, that's enough recycling. But of course, we are talking about recycling that creates opportunities for people to be employed. So um, the other thing we also see as a, uh, an opportunity Um, but that has been found to, in many ways, pollute the lake. Um, so it doesn't come off as a, a green um, enterprise. However, when you do it in ponds, uh, following the right uh, guidelines, that, that is considered a green um, approach. So these are opportunities. Um, Water harvesting, innovations around post-harvest loss. I told you 30% of food in Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, is, goes to waste. Um, what innovations can we think about that can reduce this amount of loss? Now, if anyone comes up with an idea in that direction, it's a green initiative. Um, soilless farming. Anyone who has heard of soilless farming? Basically farming that doesn't depend on the soil. Hydroponics, aquaponics, and things around that. It may not be so appropriate in the JOY program, especially because it is more applicable in context of land shortage. Uh, typically in urban, peri-urban settings where People have to improvise with small uh, uh, projects, but it doesn't stop anyone.
we now go into some specific examples of uh, products and services. Recycled from the husks that you see on the wheelbarrow, and uh, they are turned into what you see. But the interesting bit is uh, if you are tired of using them, maybe. Efficiency and uh, promoting sustainability in general. So that motorcycle you see is an improvised cooler, milk cooler.
lived without the right skills. And uh, we see an opportunity for the program, the JOY program, to identify uh, certain trades and focus on them, whether in the immediate or short term, to develop some training um, arrangements along that. But as a context from our assessment,
Um, it will not be of much use for now to think about a green approach that is going to cost the project money but does not essentially result into a job one way or another or a business a green business opportunity which is again a job if for example a youth is trained in a construction of biogas bio, bio, bio system so what you saw there is we, it's called a biodigester uh, that that uh, system it is a scientifically designed system uh, that generates the gas um, that goes through the pipes and then one thing I forgot to talk about on uh, biogas is that there is another byproduct linked to biogas and that is organic manure <coughs> so when the cow dung is released um, it, it, what it releases is, is uh, actually organic manure green service enterprise for youth. Uh, those that might be interested in developing enterprises around that can be trained both on this, the technical skills of building the system and also the entrepreneurial skills. How do they go into the market? A lot of people out there have uh, livestock and it is generating waste. How can they tap into these opportunities? and maybe get uh, sustainable jobs for themselves. That's one classic case of uh, self-employment job opportunity that can result into the kind of training that uh, the JOY program can initiate. So with that, um, I welcome questions, uh, comments, and feel free to ask uh, anything connected to this. But as we also reflect on those three questions, um, what is the most suitable approach for green skills development for youth under the JOY program? For example, having listened to this, but also maybe you, I'm sure you've heard much of what I've said today, but maybe someone was not talking about it in the context of green jobs. People have maybe talked about organic farming, they have talked about conservation, and so on. But now is the time for you to reflect and realize that this is actually what is called a green job, and um, it promotes environmental sustainability, resource efficiency, minimizes uh, greenhouse gas emissions, and so on. So in case there are no questions, um, Thank you. Okay.
Thank you very much, Sam, for that uh, very elaborate uh, presentation on green jobs. As Sam has said, this, this are, some of these things are not new. The terminologies that are coming out are new uh, in terms of creating, you know, those sustainable jobs around, uh, you know, environmentally friend, friendly and climate smart uh, uh, practices. Eh? But uh, to keep it short, Sam asked if you had any questions. Was he that clear and concise? None of us have any any questions that we'd like like to ask. Uh, Margaret, can I bring the mic to you? I can hear you. <laughs> No, I think mine is not um, more of a question, but uh, first to appreciate uh, the elaborate uh, uh, presentation by Sam, um, mostly because it helps uh, a reflection into a lot of the things that we do, but do not necessarily look at them with a lens of green. And uh, as we embark in uh, expounding on our partnerships, as also establishment of enterprises, then we would be able to uh, have a look into the activities of an enterprise and be able to uh, champion the green uh, transformation agenda, as well as seeing the opportunities that have been presented, uh, the alternative opportunities that have been presented in Sam's uh, presentation, and also be able to present the same opportunities to the young people. As an institution, we are uh, very amassed in particular. We are very keen on the green transformation agenda. Uh, where we are promoting the innovations as well as financing innovations uh, around the same. So it will be keen to just see how we can expand on that collaborations where there are innovations and where there is financing uh, that is required. Okay, thank you, Margaret. Any other comment, question? Yeah. Robert? Okay, uh, thank you very much. <coughs> For me, first of all, uh, it has been an eye-opener. <coughs> uh, like uh, for our company, I've come to realize that uh, actually all our activities are, are green. So uh, the question for me here is uh, how, how is the JOY project now uh, coming to intervene or what partnerships is it uh, intending to make in terms of strengthening this uh, area of green jobs? All right. Thank you, Robert. I, I think that one was uh, directed at me, but Sam, do you want to help me out? I already have the answer. Okay. <laughs> Okay, in terms of what Joy will be doing, huh? uh, as I said yesterday, we will be investing in a little bit of uh, infrastructure upgrade at the hub level, huh? uh, in terms of, uh, you know, for practical experience on uh, green jobs. So it's not just about the youth passing here and being told, oh, this is what green jobs are, huh? and so forth. But where, for example, any of the hubs has, you know, a little bit of a deficiency around the infrastructure, around green jobs. So, for example, how to install a solar panel. Yeah? We are not just going to teach that there in theory. There should be a practical experience at Puani, for example, where now students are told, and this is how, this is how to do it. Huh? How to install a drip irrigation kit with a solar pump. Yeah, same thing. So that's one area. The second area is, of course, in the curriculum. Yeah? Uh, when we were discussing with Pwani, I'm sure Shamberere is the same because the situation is the same around the country. Yeah? Not many institutions have a curriculum or training modules on, you know, uh, uh, on, on, on green... Uh, you know, on renewable energy, for example, that lead to green jobs, eh? okay? On the self-employment pathway, 
we shall also be working with some of the, you know, some of the youth groups or smaller enterprises eh? to get them to invest as well in uh, uh, the green or you know the the green green job uh, infrastructure yeah and by doing that say for example robert you guys did that just say for example yeah that you invested in that number one your power costs go down over time hmm? yeah your utility costs go down but currently do you have somebody who who is going to maintain such a thing let's say a solar panel again not yet if you if you took in somebody how many jobs you would you have created just as a small scale enterprise just let's say you just took in one you'll have created one that one job isn't it yeah now imagine if other small scale enterprises did the same they are also creating jobs along the, that line the thing is you would not want to invest in somebody like that who doesn't have the skill isn't it that's where the hub comes in as well okay have i kind of made the connection for you yeah is it a bit clear now so it's not just around the modules and the training and providing the or filling in that gap that skill gap but it's also about you know working with uh, small scale enterprises and larger ones to create jobs around that as well however you you see where we went at agrico they have already invested in that remember i asked karin so who maintains this <laughs> what was her answer <laughs> she has no idea <laughs> who maintains them they call the people who put eh? if it was solar tech for example they probably will end up calling solar tech eh? to send one of their technicians all the way to where she is or where they are to maintain that equipment why not invest in somebody in-house those are the kind of opportunities we want to create eh? And that's the bigger picture now. So, Sam, you want to say something? Yes, I want to say something um, that uh, Margaret's uh, comment just reminded me about very briefly. So, when we are talking about green enterprises, um, there is a big discussion on green finance. So, conventional banking systems are uh, unlikely to borrow, to lend to green enterprises because um, one maybe they don't understand them they see them as risky and so on yet we have a social aspect to this green so uh, one engages in a green enterprise uh, it is the implementation